I'm going to just take a moment to talk about the inequality sign itself. Notice that the side that's smaller is less than, and the side that's bigger is greater than. If you're just working with numbers, no variables, it's fine to read from left to right. 2 is less than 5, or 8 is greater than 1. But if you're working with algebraic inequalities, where there's a letter or, more accurately, a variable involved, it's important to read from the variable. This is because it's the values of x with which we are concerned. And if you read it from the variable, you know that x can be any value that is greater than 3. Down here we have x is less than 10, x is less than 10, and with the other inequality symbol, x is greater than or equal to 2. Notice the or equal has part of an equal sign. x is greater than or equal to 2. And finally, x is less than or equal to 8 x is less than or equal to 8. Now I'll go over how to solve these four inequalities, as well as how to graph the solutions and then write the solutions in interval notation. Even if you're not presently asked to write solutions in interval notation, it goes very quickly once you have a graph. And eventually in mathematics, you will have to learn this mathematical shorthand. For this algebraic inequality, I'm going to assume that you would be fairly comfortable solving it if it was an algebraic equation, that is if you had an equal sign rather than an inequality sign. So as with algebraic equations, I'm trying to get x all by itself. Let's get rid of this 7. Of course, that's a 0. Bring down the 3x, the inequality sign, and 12. Now let's get rid of the 3. Opposite operation is division. So this leaves us with x is greater than 4. And hopefully this helps illustrate why it's helpful to read from the variable when you're dealing with inequalities. x can be any value that is greater than 4. Since the first number that we're concerned with here is a 4, I'm just going to put 4 in the middle. And then bigger numbers to the right. Smaller numbers to the left. If this number line kept going, I could go 0, negative 1, negative 2, etc. But this is fine to illustrate all the values that x could be. I'll put another small number line over here. This one is not courtesy of MathWarehouse.com, but the others, the big nice ones, are. Because for x greater than 4, some math books will have you use an open circle for the greater than symbol. My preference is to use a parenthesis, and many math books will use this method. This is also what we use for interval notation, so I'm going to be using this on the number line. These two symbols mean the same thing. Now x can be any value greater than 4. It could be 5, it could be 6, it could be 4 and a half, it could be 200. So all we do is shade in this direction. And this indicates that x could be any value off towards infinity. So on this number line, x can be any value off towards infinity. Now if you graph the solutions first, the interval notation flows very nicely from the graph. You simply use an open parenthesis 
the number 4, comma, x can be any value out towards infinity. So you say 4, comma, infinity. And since you can never touch infinity, you'll use a parenthesis here as well. This shows how to solve the inequality, graph the solutions, and write the solutions in interval notation. With this algebraic inequality, notice we have variables on each side, so we'll need to get them to one side. Uh, prior to that, let's go ahead and clean this up a little. We can combine two like terms here, and we'll have two like terms on the right side as well. Combining a 7r and a negative 1r, this gives us 6r. And then combining positive 17 and positive 3, this gives us a 20. I'll bring down whatever I haven't touched on this side, the plus 4 or positive 4, however you care to see that our inequality sign, and the negative 2r. Let's get rid of this negative 2r with a positive 2r on each side of the inequality. That's a 0, don't have to write it, we'll bring down our 20 inequality sign. Uh, we have 8r plus 4. Let's get rid of this 4, trying to get r all by itself. This leaves us with 16 inequality sign, that's a 0, and we have our 8r. So the last step for solving the inequality is divide each side by 8, and this leaves us with r is less than or equal to 2. I'll put 2 in the center of the number line, and I'm not going to worry about which way is going to get shaded. I'll just put 2 in the center, and we'll see which way it goes. And again, I'll put a small number line off to the side to show the other notation. For r is less than or equal to 2, if you're using the circle notation, you use a closed circle. This indicates that you're actually touching the 2. r could be 2. r could also be any value less than 2. So r could be a 1, a 0, it could be 1 and a half, it could be 1 half. So rather than put thousands of points, we just fill in the number line to the left in this case. And rather than a parenthesis at 2, the shorthand is to use a bracket. And notice the bracket sort of has equal signs at the top, well, part of an equal sign at the top, part of the equal sign at the bottom. So it makes sense that they've chosen a bracket to indicate less than or equal. And again, since r is less than or equal to 2, we shade values that are less than or equal to 2. Now for interval notation, again, I like to graph it before writing the interval notation because I'll use a bracket opening in the same direction as the graph. I put in a 2, comma, and then we want values out towards negative infinity. And you can never touch infinity, so we always use parentheses 
next to the infinity symbol. And what helps me to remember this is this symbol is curved, just like the parenthesis. So in review, if you have strictly greater than or strictly less than, you use an open circle. Notice you can't actually touch the four, you're just real close to it. Or a parenthesis. For interval notation, you always use the parenthesis if you have this symbol. If you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you use a closed circle or a bracket, whichever is the practice in your class or your textbook. But for interval notation, you always use a bracket with less than or equal or greater than or equal. With this inequality, we'll have to get rid of these two sets of parentheses before we can solve for Q. Distribute the negative 3 to each term inside the parentheses. We'll bring down the negative 28, the inequality sign, and we'll have to distribute the negative 5. Now on this side there's no like terms, but over here, negative 12, negative 28, combined to give us a negative 40, and I'll just bring down whatever I haven't used. Now notice you have Q on each side. If we get rid of the negative 15 Q, you'll have your variable on the left, which is the preference for many people. If we get rid of the negative 21 Q, you won't have to deal with a negative in front of your variable. I'll go ahead and get rid of the negative 15 Q, and we'll just have to keep up with the negative. This leaves us with negative 6 Q. Bring down our negative 40. And obviously that's a 0. Now I'll get rid of the negative 40. And this leaves us with now I just have to get rid of the negative 6 so we're going to divide each side by negative 6 whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number you have to reverse the inequality sign So now we have Q is greater than negative 5. So I'll just put the negative 5 in the middle of the number line. It doesn't have to be in the middle, but that way I can shade in either direction. I don't have to figure that out while I'm putting in the numbers. Numbers that are greater to the right. Numbers that are less to the left. Since Q can be any value greater than negative 5, I'll use an open parenthesis at negative 5, opening towards the greater values. And we shade in to the right. Interval notation flows nicely from the graph. Open parenthesis, negative 5, comma, and Q can be any value out towards infinity and infinity always gets a parenthesis. If you use the circle notation, I'll make a quick number line off to the side. Since Q is strictly greater than, we can't touch that negative 5. We use open circle, and then we shade to the right again.
We could start by clearing this inequality of fractions, but since there's only one term on each side, I think it would be easier to simply get rid of the negative 5 eighths. Since I'm going to deal with fractions, I would like all fractions. I'll make 10 a fraction, and now divide by negative 5 eighths, which is to say multiply by negative 8 fifths. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality sign. So I've taken care of that now, so I don't forget it. Over here, everything's going to clean up and we'll just be left with a positive 1k. And over here, I could reduce before multiplying. So common factor of 5, Divide by 5 leaves you with 1. Divide by 5 leaves you with 2. And then negative 8 times 2 is a negative 16. So I'll just put negative 16 in the middle. K is less than or equal to negative 16. So I'll use the bracket. And since k can be any value less than negative 16, I'll shade to the left. Now for interval notation, the same bracket, negative 16, comma, and k can be any value out towards negative infinity. And again, infinity always gets a parenthesis. If you'd like some practice with these types of problems, as long as you're at my website, you can download a two-page worksheet along with a two-page detailed answer key.